So, got a question. Do you believe in bad luck spreading? I didn't used to believe in such things, but the story of Starliner has made me reconsider. Since Boeing's first launch of the Starliner in early June, besides the problems caused by the spacecraft itself, there's been a series of issues with humanity's small home in the vast universe. These include a wrong signal transmission on the ISS, a gas leak in the Falcon 9 second stage, and more recently, a malfunction with the Cingus cargo ship during its journey to the ISS. Not only that, the latest news indicates that the Starliner situation has even more problems. On August 6, NASA officially confirmed that they would delay the next spacecraft launch to the ISS Crew-9 until at least September 24th. This is a major delay compared to the previous launch date of August 18th. In it, the agency cuts to the chase and shares right off the bat that the delay was to enable mission managers to finalize return planning for the agency's Boeing crew flight test currently docked to the orbiting laboratory. This demonstrates the evasiveness regarding Starliner's issues and the return of the two astronauts. As of Monday, NASA and Boeing still have not given any information indicating that they found the root cause of the thruster malfunction. Boeing urged NASA to accept a flight rationale as an alternative solution. This means that Boeing believes they provided enough data to NASA to be confident that the thrusters will not fail catastrophically. NASA also seems quite confident in Starliner and is considering this. They've made no decisions regarding the return of astronauts Williams and Wilmore. The agency and Boeing continue to evaluate the spacecraft's readiness. So instead of making major decisions regarding Boeing, NASA has decided to delay the Crew-9 mission with Dragon. Although they announced the delay of Crew-9, interestingly, NASA's release does not share any updates for Crew-9's crew. Right now, a SpaceX Crew Dragon for Crew-8 and Starliner are docked with the ISS, which constrains the station's ability to accommodate more crewed vehicles. Crew-9's current complement plans to fly NASA astronaut Zena Cardman, Nick Haig, and Stephanie Wilson, along with Roscosmo astronaut Alexander Gorbunov, to the ISS for a six-month mission. However, the agency planned to return Wilmore and Williams to Earth on SpaceX's Dragon. Then it could have chosen to fly just two astronauts on the Dragon and have Williams and Wilmore join when they returned. Such a profile would have seen the Boeing astronauts spend more than six months in space, and that would have meant that they flew in a ship for which they received little training. As of now, NASA and Boeing continue to analyze the data from a hot fire test that took place on Starliner last weekend. In NASA's latest presser, commercial crew manager Steve Stitch shared that this data could have been used to inform an agency review as soon as late last week. However, with no word from NASA since then, speculation's grown about Starliner's ability to actually bring the crew back home. Other aspects of the ship's performance that NASA and Boeing are evaluating are the flight rationale for the integrated propulsion system and system reliability. During his talk, Stitch shared that the manner in which Starliner's thrusters, which have proven to be the most troublesome component, were behaving after a sun-facing orientation and their encapsulation in a doghouse was key to understanding the ship's behavior and its return profile. However, these thrusters are responsible for moving the ship away from the ISS and ensuring that it can enter Earth's atmosphere, which risks a collision with the ISS and an incorrect re-entry profile being among those the space agency is likely evaluating. Moreover, the current flight software on the Starliner spacecraft, as configured, is unable to automatically perform the undocking from the space station and re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. It will take approximately four weeks to update and validate the software to restore automatic functionality. Honestly, it's going to be safer for Wilmore and Williams if NASA decided to bring them back to Earth inside the Crew Dragon spacecraft. The safety of astronauts is always paramount in any space mission. We're all waiting for an update on Wednesday, August 7th, and perhaps by the time this video is uploaded to our YouTube channel, we might not have been able to immediately update you on any new developments. If you have anything you think we might have missed, don't hesitate to let us know in the comments. Your contributions down there definitely help our community gain a fuller understanding of the situation, so thanks for that. And by the way, if you do like this video, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel. All right.
So what opportunities does the delay in Dragon's launch schedule create for Starliner? First, it gives NASA more time to determine Starliner's flight capability. This points to the need to update Starliner's flight software. In reality, the current flight software on Starliner's spacecraft cannot autonomously detach from the space station and then re-enter Earth's atmosphere. At first glance, this does seem illogical. After all, Boeing's Orbital Flight Test 2 in May of 2022 was a fully automated test of Starliner. In that mission, the spacecraft flew to the space station without a crew on board and then came back to Earth six days later. Although the 2022 flight test was completed by a different Starliner capsule, it clearly demonstrated the program flight software's ability to autonomously dock and return to Earth. Boeing has not responded to media inquiries about why this capability was removed for the crewed flight test. It's unclear what changes Boeing officials have made to the vehicle or its software in the two years leading up to the current launch of Wilmore and Williams. It is possible the crew might manually have to press the undocking button inside the spacecraft or the fully automated software has been removed from the Starliner's coding to simplify its software package. Regardless, sources describe the process of updating the undocking software on Starliner as non-trivial and significant, with reports suggesting it might involve rewriting a thousand lines of code and could take up to four weeks. Well, this would be quite the challenge if I were a Boeing programmer. But even if this gets done, Starliner is considered a spacecraft that requires astronauts to perform operational tasks to bring it back home to Earth. The capsule is designed as a spacecraft with a crew in the cockpit. The crew is an integral part of the spacecraft. This also means that worst-case scenario, if the two astronauts cannot be returned, Starliner could be abandoned, potentially burning up in the atmosphere and unable to come home intact. In truth, Boeing's solution at present is just that. If NASA and Boeing are determined to stick with the decision that the two astronauts have to return with the spacecraft they came on, we hope that the undocking software update is going to work properly. Right now, NASA's been forced to swallow a pretty bitter pill by having to deal with a slew of risks related to Starliner's delays. This includes risks present on the ISS, such as risks to the crew aboard the ISS and risks to the astronauts on the Starliner spacecraft. It's undeniable that having more astronauts on the ISS can help optimize work in space. Each astronaut brings a different set of skills, allowing for greater diversity of experiments and tasks. However, when astronauts remain on the station for extended periods without rotation due to schedule disruptions, daily life gets a bit more complex. The astronauts have to adjust their routines, things like sharing, sleeping, and working areas to scheduling exercise equipment usage. The water recycling and waste management systems also come under greater strain. Moreover, the effects of zero-gravity environment on the human body are no small challenge. Especially with limited resources like food and water, meticulous management is required. Recently, a Northrop Grumman Cygnus cargo spacecraft encountered problems on its trip to the ISS, where it was carrying scientific experiments and, more importantly, essential supplies for the crew. Among these supplies were some items specifically intended for astronauts Wilmore and Williams, who'd been on the station for nearly two months on the Starliner mission. Things like clothing that was removed from the Starliner just before launch to make room for spare parts for the station's urine processor and some personal food items. It's quite alarming that after six hours of flight, Singus encountered issues with engine burn maneuvers, missing the earliest possible docking time with the ISS. This could have led to a shortage in the living conditions for the astronauts on the station. But fortunately, everything got resolved by Northrop Grumman's engineers, allowing us to breathe a collective sigh of relief. Singus has managed to get back on course to meet the ISS, although a bit later than planned. Now, I'm not superstitious, but the bad luck surrounding Starliner seems to have affected everything around it. You too can see that, right? But in the end, only the future can truly and transparently explain everything that's happening right now. And it's not just affecting the crew on the ISS. Starliner's delays also cause disruptions related to the docking ports and launch pads on the ground. Before launching the CFT mission, NASA officials expressed confidence in conducting the flight test in June because it was a relatively low activity period at the ISS. Therefore, even if the mission lasted a bit longer than the announced 8 to 10 days, they believed they could still manage the schedule. However, more than 60 days have passed since NASA astronauts Wilmore and Williams were launched on a ULA Atlas V rocket, and until either the Starliner spacecraft or the Crew-8 Dragon leaves ISS, no docking port's going to be available for the crew. 
Crew-9 mission. NASA prefers to have direct interaction on the space station between incoming and outgoing crews, which they refer to as a direct handover. The only time in the ISS commercial crew program era that this didn't happen was when weather delays pushed the Crew-3 mission launch to the point where they decided Crew-2 needed to come down before the next launch. Therefore, NASA has stated that they want to keep Crew-8 in place until Crew-9 arrives, which means Starliner must undock and come back to Earth first. This would free up the forward port on the Harmony module of the ISS, which is the preferred docking location for spaceships arriving from the U.S. NASA also announced that the Crew-9 mission will move from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy to SLC-40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. And according to NASA, this will avoid conflicts with launch pad preparations for NASA's Europa Clipper mission, which starts in September. The planetary launch window for Europa Clippa opens on October 10th, and SpaceX typically needs about three weeks to transition the launch pad from a Falcon 9 config to a Falcon Heavy. The change in launch site for Crew-9 will mark the first crewed launch from SLC-40 since SpaceX completed the construction of a new crew access tower in 2023. In a press conference in late July, NASA officials said they were close to finishing the certification of SLC-40 for Crew Dragon launches. NASA also stated that this change in schedule means that the next Cargo Dragon mission, CRS-31, will not launch any earlier than mid-October. That's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.